Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is your girl, Angel Baby, and I am back with another video. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So that way, anytime I drop a video, y'all will be notified. Also, everything in this video is either alleged, my thoughts and opinion, and or my perception. Seems as if Miss Aubrey O'Day's got herself twisted all up in this ditty mess. And guess what? I don't blame her because this is a long time coming. So yes, Aubrey O'Day has come out, y'all, and she has spoken. Now, there was a couple of things that Aubrey did put on Instagram last week after Diddy's house got raided. I'm sure you guys remember Aubrey O'Day from Danity Kane. That was like one of the number one girl groups at that time. All five girls leading singers. They all could sing. They all could dance. That group at that time was popping until Diddy pulled the plug. And we'll get into why he did that with his evil self a little bit later on. Now, there was a couple of things that Aubrey did right on Instagram and it caught my eye. One of the things that Aubrey said was, what you sow, you shall reap. I guess what she meant to say, what you reap, you shall sow. Same thing. It's same difference. But another thing that um, Aubrey did post on Instagram was, I hope this paves the way for all of us victims to speak out on what we have endured. So basically, this raid and everybody coming out and this investigation being open, basically, um, gives them the strength to just basically come forward and tell their story and that's exactly what Aubrey has been trying to do for quite some time and now that um, it's come to the forefront I think she's feeling validated now and heard because for the longest time she didn't feel like anyone was listening to her because Diddy you know he's a very very powerful man in this industry Aubrey said she came into this industry when she was only 17 years old, y'all. Um, she said that Diddy had some kind of weird sadistic hold over her, allegedly. Um, I do have to say allegedly, obviously, but um, I did see Making the Band, and I, my opinion, I feel like he did have some kind of weird interest in Aubrey. Um, the whole dynamic was just awkward and it was very uncomfortable very uncomfortable to watch there would just be a lot of times when Diddy would just talk down on the girls he always criticized them like I would always just sit there and think if I was in front of Diddy like I don't think I could do it like I always would think that I would always think that these girls are super strong because he was just a beast like he was so mean y'all for those of you who remember and you guys watch the show, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Comment down below if you guys remember. And Aubrey, she was the one with the mouth. Like, she would tell Diddy. And Diddy didn't like that. He didn't like Aubrey's mouth, and he let that be very clear. He would tell her, you got a lot of mouth on you. He would call her promiscuous. Um, and once she started hanging out with Kim K, it was a wrap. Like, Diddy was done. And he fired her and D Woods on national television. And it was that right there. I was just, oh, I was so irritated when Diddy fired them. Like, it was the end of Danity Kane. I was so pissed. Aubrey said they toured a lot. They made so much money. Or Diddy made so much money. Millions off of these girls. They went number one, double platinum. Just these girls were number one everywhere. And Aubrey said they allegedly got $4,000. They never ever saw any of that other money. Now, this is what Aubrey is alleging, y'all. She said recently, after the Cassie thing came out, the Cassie lawsuit, they got some... Uh, paperwork basically from Sony who owns their publishing right wanted to get them to sign off on this deal where they would only get like Aubrey said it was like eight nine hundred dollars 
which is a joke, some kind of streaming deal. But if they signed that paper, then they couldn't talk to anybody, basically. It had, like, these list of people that they couldn't talk to, which included their former bandmates. Aubrey said, of course, she didn't sign the deal, um, but she said some of the girls did sign the deal. And because of those girls signing the deal, they could never all five come together and tell their story at any point now. Because the ones that signed the deal, they basically signed away their freedom of speech. They basically signed away their rights as just humans, period. Like, you can't talk to this person. That is so crazy. I've never, like, to sign a paper to say that you can't talk to somebody. Wow. Aubrey also alleges because she did not want to sign the paper, some of the girls did not want to sign the paper, this guy on the right is Gene Deal. He was Puff's bodyguard. Now, Gene came out and said that Puff allegedly told him and somebody else that he should, you know, drug the girls up and basically give them out to his ninjas because he was pissed that they did not want to sign that paper. This man, in my opinion, this is crazy. If this is true, this man is a monster. Aubrey alleges that when she was touring with Puff, she became addicted um, to substances. I don't know if it was Ambien, Ativan, one of those, um, to where she gets bad anxiety when she gets on the plane. And she says they were on the plane sometimes four to five times a day. Aubrey said that um, when she couldn't sleep, Puff had one of his doctors come in and they put her on that medication, which she got addicted to. And she became addicted for many, many years. Now, Aubrey is basically now turning 40 and she just recently got clean, y'all. She said it was a point in time where she was allegedly taking up to 16 pills a day. And she said that she went to go do some kind of psychedelic therapy in Bali. And she said it was the most amazing thing for her. So right now, as of right now, it seems like she's living a happy, healthy life. And she says she has all her receipts and she's ready. She's ready to come after Diddy. And guess who else I think is trying to come after Diddy, y'all? In my opinion. Lemon pepper. Do y'all remember when Krishan said that Diddy yoked up Lemmy? Remember when he got him in the room and was like, do you F with Krishan? Straight up broke his little spirit. He didn't have his bodyguards with him. He got embarrassed in front of Krishan. I think the reason why he went and got Aubrey O'Day and put her on baddies was to get back at Puff. Because Lemmy already knows that Aubrey is the one person that can't stand Diddy. She's very vocal and she going to speak on it. And he knew if he put Aubrey on that platform, she going to speak all about it. Mark my words. Watch her mention some stuff about Puff on this upcoming season of Baddies, y'all. I feel like Lemmy, this is a card he played. And Puff knows it. You know what I'm saying? Puff done broke his little spirit, hurt his little feelings, and he went and got Aubrey and put her on baddies. That is so petty, but I like it. I'm going to go ahead and end this video. I really want to know y'all thoughts and opinion on this whole situation. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time. Bye, guys.